And just like that, we are back with another Savage Stream. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I don't know. Been, uh, yeah, I worked out just a little while ago and I am uh, about ready for bed. Uh, last night, we covered how to create a overclock template, like a farm-wide overclock template for AMD using Hi uh, Hive OS. And we went through that, and then at the end, I got to give a special shout out to uh, Chan Coin because he, at the end he was recommend he had recommended earlier on like some some settings, and those were some sweet sweet settings for uh, RX 580s and RX 570s. Uh, mining Ethereum is, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure it would apply to other things, but uh, anything ETH hash would probably be would probably those settings would probably apply so um yeah super super good settings uh you know we we dropped a lot of wattage but didn't lose any uh, hash power so our hash rate so it worked out really well here they are on the screen if you are wondering what they are and this is again this is for rx 570s and rx 580s 1180 on the core two on the dpm the core state which is probably i'd always gone with three right there so i think that two is probably a big may, probably made the biggest difference and then on uh, core voltage you go 840 and then on the memory clock you go 2100 and everything else is blank so yeah super super good settings appreciate that a lot there chan coin much appreciated sir And I just made Chancoin a mod. I know you're on, I think you're a mod on Red Panda, right? So you're a mod over here now. So there you go. Congratulations. I'll, uh, you know, checks in the mail. <laughs> All right, so tonight we, by the, end of this, by the end of this stream, you should be comfortable with properly overclocking an NVIDIA GPU in Hive OS for maximum efficiency. Hopefully that's, we can get, we can get through this uh, pretty quickly because I got a couple of things at the end I wanna, wanna cover. I think that'll be kind of cool. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. I am currently mining um, Bitcash. I saw today that they were, if you go to what to mine, and I went to my rig here and calculate, I've got all my settings in here, 10.3 cents per kilowatt hour, which kills me. Uh, but earlier today they were actually at the top and now swaps at the top again. So <laughs> swapping uh, and Bitcash for this rig anyway, swapping Bitcash have been kind of flipping, flip flopping and then Zell has been in between there the whole time. So. Uh, it's pretty awesome that I, I cover a lot of these a lot. I cover content on all three of these projects pretty pretty frequently I think that that's pretty cool that they are, you know Typically somewhere towards the top. So it's nice to see them all in a row like this. So that's kind of neat All right, so we are Currently mining Bitcash. I was mining it. I just found you know what I had to do uh, I know this is not really what we're supposed to be covering, but I wanted to show you something or, oh, it did it again. Today, the hash power for Bitcash has been going back and forth between uh, Miner Tokyo and B-Side. Now, this is a small project, super small market cap. I mean, nano cap, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's I don't even know what it is, to be honest. It's way down there. Let's go and look. I was looking at it earlier. Uh, yeah, it doesn't even have anything for market gap, probably because of the stablecoin uh, capability, uh, the in wallet state stablecoin, and there's a it's there's basically three coins on one chain. It's the gold, uh, Bit Bitcash gold, then there's Bitcash dollar, and then Bitcash itself, and that's probably why they don't have a market cap. But it's really small. You can tell it's only eighty two thousand trading volume, so it's way down there. Uh, and let's look at the the ranking. I think uh, we'll show you that. Where's the ranking? I'm looking for it. Is there not a ranking on here? Am I overlooking it? Uh, ranking, ranking. I don't see it anywhere. Okay, so maybe they're 
Unranked? I don't know. Okay, maybe it, yeah, it's probably unranked because of this, because there's no market cap. Okay, so at least it's showing up on CoinGecko, but it's just not not ranked. Let's see if it's on. Let's go over here to Coin Market Cap. I don't like Coin Market Cap anymore because of uh, Binance thing, but um, let's see if they have a ranking over here. Yeah, see, 11.85. They're way up there, but it, it's got a. Yeah, it's not eligible for normal ranking. Probably, again, you know, I haven't researched it, but probably that's because of the stablecoin capability and all that stuff. Okay, all right, so enough of that. But I just want to point out that, man, it, the hash rate was just really flipping, like like Minor Tokyo. B-side, I think, was down here at the bottom, and it was saying having some problems. I think that they just forked. I, I thought that they had forked 2x, 25x a while back, but maybe it was something new that happened that had to let the pools catch up with what was going on. I don't know. I uh, didn't look into it that, that far. I do mine Bitcash off and on, so uh, you know this is not like me just hopping on whatever is most profitable. I knew that I was going to be using this rig today for this exercise, so I wanted to get it up and running on Hive, and I was like, you know what, what's profitable? So I went over there and looked and saw a bit cash. I was like, all right, that's cool. So I'll set it, set it up for that. So that's what I did. All right, let me check the chat before we get going and see what is up. Yeah, yeah, uh, Chan Coin Raven is much more stable. Yeah, Ace24 uh, Chan Coin actually mentioned that uh, he sent me a message on the video or he uh, he put a comment on the video thanking us for thanking you for that for those settings and I think he mentioned how much he it helped him today yeah it like went from 31 to 32 uh, we were seeing I think 32.5 or almost 32 or something like that last night just real quickly and it was less power and and cooler yeah it's it is really cool what's up crypto Mikhail how's it going man all right, so let's go run through this for, let's run through the overclock template, the farm-wide overclock template for NVIDIA GPUs. It's basically the same as last night, uh, you know, because you would basically create one, you could just create one farm-wide overclocking template that has both default overclock settings for AMD and uh, NVIDIA, right? So. I deleted the one from last night because I wanted to run back through it again without having one created already. But just keep in mind that you can put all of the settings for GPU, for AMD and Nvidia in the one overclock template. All right, it can uh, it can be farm wide in there. So, uh, you know, the, basically the benefits of overclocking. You might be wondering, you know, if you're kind of new or if you're just popping in here randomly. Uh, you know overclocking it has a lot of benefits a lot of people overclock for gaming and all that stuff But in the case of mining it's important for overclocking for performance But more importantly is like the down volting for lower power consumption, right? Because uh, you you really want to use the, the least amount of power to get the most hash rate So you're looking for that hash per watt efficiency and that's what's most important uh, when it comes to to mining now I say most important, but if there was a coin that say just forked like Ravencoin or something along those lines where the, the, the difficulty is so low, you're going to accumulate so many coins if you just throw the maximum amount, amount of hash power at a project for a short amount of time, maybe a day or two days or three days, then in those cases, you're not really too concerned about really the hash per watt because at those at in those cases you just want to accumulate as much as possible because the difficulty is low you want to just crush it with as much hash power as possible get that but if you're going for long term you know normalized stable then you you need to, you want to be efficient you want to you want to increase your uh hash per watt values and be super efficient so uh, that's kind of you know basically a, a quick rundown on mining overclocks and you'll hear me say it. I've said it a bunch of times. You know, I don't, I don't play around with overclocks too much. Once I get a rig configured, stable, efficient, in my eyes, I let it rock. Because I think that tinkering around with stuff and breaking it. I mean, if look, I, I say this too all the time. If you're bored on a Saturday or whatever, right? Go for it. 
you know, if you want to play around with it, but just realize that you are probably eating into your profits a little bit. If you, you know, set, let's say you, let's say it's, uh, you know, Saturday, Sunday night and you got to work Monday. So Sunday night you're playing around, tinkering around with some settings and you don't have remote access to your rig from work. You throw something in there. It seems pretty stable, seems awesome. Okay, great. You go to work. During the day, you get a notification on your phone that your rig isn't is is off, right? You can't do anything about it. Come to find out, you know, you put in something that that crashed after six hours or whatever, right? So, you know, it's important to get efficient, but you also want to be uh, reliable and stable, right? So, just keep those kind of things in mind. Yeah, a lot of people will post like, "Oh, I got, you know, so and so hash rate, uh, you know, 36 mega hash on a RX 570." You know, they'll post a picture of it and it's like, okay, but you know, there's five lines of it or whatever before the miner crashes, right? Sure, those things happen. You know, you can push a card that hard and, and get crazy ass settings, but or crazy ass efficiency and, and, and mega hash, you know, and hash rate and all that, but it probably won't last. So you're, you're really looking for efficiency and stability. Okay, so I'm, I'm up here just just talking about nonsense but okay you guys already know all this stuff so in uh you know one, one of the best ways to know that your overclock settings are good or at least not improper or you know have other issues is your uh accepted shares ratio so you can see right here on this rig it's been running for quite some time uh actually it's only says 15 minutes because i did reboot it uh right before the stream I didn't need to actually I did need to because I was here's what I saw okay so see this little arrow up here it wants to upgrade but if you click on it there's nothing there's not nothing to upgrade to so I don't know why it's doing that so I've seen that before I don't know why it does it but it's indicating it needs an upgrade that isn't there you know I'm on current already so all right so that's why I rebooted it I want to see if that would clear up it didn't uh, so that's why it's only 25 minutes but Okay, so right here, you know, you want to you want a high uh, accepted shares ratio. Uh, it's pretty much the quickest way to tell that your overclock settings are jacked up is whenever you're getting rejected or invalid shares. All right, so that's like the biggest indication. So in, in HiveOS, it's probably best to create a farm-wide overclock setting uh, profile to our template to establish a baseline for your rigs so that if you attach a new rig to your farm, it will get a default profile instead of stock clocks and voltages that can, you know, they can easily push your GPUs and your electrical systems like breakers and all that stuff, uh, power strips to their limits if left unchecked. So if you have this situation where a rig just attaches with everything stock and it doesn't know what overclock settings to, to have or nothing's assigned to it through Hive OS, then it's just gonna go balls to the wall and, and be maximum, right? So we ran into that before with, I think it was Monday night, whenever we first attached a rig to Hive OS, you know, initially, and it was just running hot and all that stuff. We had to mess with the fans and, uh, yeah, so uh, just keep that in mind. All right, as you move forward with your overclocking template. So in order to create one, you would go into Hive OS. Now this this video assumes all kinds of stuff. It assumes that you already have a rig running on Hive OS. Clearly, you can see that uh, that that is an assumption here. But you want to go to overclock templates, and then you can see I've already got some set in here for specific algorithms. A lot of these I could probably do away with. They're just kind of hanging out here from years ago. Uh, but you want to add, add, click add OC template. Then you want to give it a name. So we'll call it uh, Savage Farm OC template. Sounds good to me. Click save. So it says right here, you know, default config but you, you know, you, it's not real intuitive with what you're supposed to do here. You could come down here, I think, and just click right here and start doing it. But you could also click right here. I think those might do, do those do the same exact thing? It looks like they do. Wait a minute. All right, so 
this is the default config. This is what you want to add. You want to click add right here. And then we'll, we're going to, we're going to end up changing the default config. Okay. So that, yeah, you might be able to do it either way, but uh, we're going to go this route because this is the, this is what the hive instructions say to do. So we're going to click add here next to Savage Farm OC template. And then we're going to choose for the algorithm. You would choose default config like that. It'll look like that. You Again, you could probably do the same thing down here. But something I didn't show last night that I wanted to show tonight is the popular presets. So if you need to know like what GPUs you have and some other settings of the GPUs, you can just come into your, uh, go to your worker here, go to your rig, and then go to run command up here. And for an NVIDIA rig, you would go NVIDIA SMI. Okay, NVIDIA dash SMI. Then click run, and then once that's done, it's gonna, basically it's, this is running a command line tool for acquiring information about NVIDIA GPUs. So once it's done, you just click on it, and you can see right here, it'll tell you some nice stuff uh, about what's going on with the GPUs, which CUDA version, which driver version, um, and which GPUs you have. It also has now I thought that this would tell me the TDP, but it doesn't look like it has the TDP. This right here, this value, this is what's currently being used by the GPU, and this is what is your cap. This is what you have set as an overclock template or an overclock setting. And I can show you that. I already have these overclocks set in there. So I'm thinking that, I don't know if maybe if it didn't have that, maybe I did, if it didn't have any OC assigned to it already, maybe you would see the three values in here. You would see a, a minimum, a most efficient, and then a maximum. But if you don't know what your TDP is, your thermal design power for your GPU, you can look it up online. Just Google your GPU model, you know, and then TDP, right? And, and you're looking for a spec sheet for your GPU to find out what the maximum amount, amount of power it can consume and properly expel the heat because that's what thermal design power is. It, that's what it's for. That's what it's representing is how much power can be pushed through this GPU and it still be able to expel the heat from that power. That's what TDP is. So uh, I, I don't know if that's... I don't know this, uh, a whole lot about this this uh, NVIDIA SMI and how may, there might be another setting. There might be some other way to, to acquire more information. But in this case, it's just showing you the current power usage and your overclock setting that's assigned to it. Also has memory and all that stuff in here too. Fan speed and whatnot. Shows you what miners, what miner it's using the process, T-Rex and yeah, cool stuff. Okay, so, but this will let you know a little bit about your GPUs. All right, a little bit more about them. So let's come over here and go back to, where was I? Go back to overclocking templates. And you go back down to this one. I'm going to, I want to see if, I think I can just click here. Actually, I'll, I'll go back to what I did here. We'll just go back here. All right, because we, we didn't save this. I'm going to go the right way. So another one is popular presets. That This is what I didn't show you last night that I want to show you tonight. So if you click on popular presets, you can actually uh, choose the coin and the algorithm and it'll narrow down some popular presets. And I think that this data is what is used in Overcooked Panda's database. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you go to, over, if you go to coin to mine today. And then over here on the left, you got overclock settings. I believe that that's the data is pulled from there. I think, I don't know. <laughs> I, it seems like I read somewhere at some point that that, that that was true, that it pulls it from the uh, database or what's going on with Hive OS, who's got what GPU assigned to what, um, you know, what overclock settings based on the uh, algorithm and all that. Okay. So this is kind of handy though, because if you wanted to get down to it, like let's say we were, we were mining, in this case, we were mining uh, Bitcash. Okay, so we'll go Bitcash, B-I-T-C. And then it, it throws the algorithm over, over there. 
and it is the correct one. It's X25X. They just forked eh, pretty recently, I think, from X16 RV2. And let's see here. So then you would, then you could, if you wanted to, you could just click the down arrow here, or click this box right here. And these are the three GPUs that it knows, HiveOS knows that these are assigned to you, or these are in your rig. This is the hardware that you have. So we're gonna go with the first one. We'll go with 1070. And then, you know, size is the, is the memory. So this is basically like a starting point or a good uh, overclock setting. It looks like cardinal cardinality is five, which is like a set of data in a mathematical pro uh, problem. Um, basically, I think that that means that um, based on usage, it's, there's, it's, it's like a higher usage. Like you wouldn't want to see like a one or zero. I don't know if zero is a number there, but uh, anyway. So you can use this to guide you in what your overclock setting should be. Okay, so that's popular presets. Uh, so you could apply these. I think if you click on it, it puts it over here. And then I think, yeah, right here. So see how it, once you choose that preset, the popular preset, it throws it right here. And then you can just click add, add, add like that to get the value over here. Now in this case, we've got a six GPU rig and you know, typically, actually, I, what did I do last night? Yeah, I, I, I used the same because we only had a two GPU rig last night. So in the case of, in this case, because we have GTX 1070s, 1070 Ti's and 1080s in this rig, what I would do here is I would just say, okay, I'm going to apply for my farm overclock settings profile uh, template, I am going to just use the settings for a 1070 because that's safe, right? Because it's the lowest performance GPU in my rig. So I'm going to use those settings. Uh, so this is what I would do. I would do just like this. I would probably even drop this down to maybe like 110 on the power just as a default. All right, let me get back to my notes and see if I'm doing this right. See if I'm on the right track. So the, the core clock looks like normally you would see around 120 to 150 for pretty, pretty basic settings for an NVIDIA GPU in Hive. And then the memory clock, this is important because if you see, it, let's say you're coming from Windows and you're normally uh, using like Afterburner, then you're basically going to double whatever you were using in Afterburner for your memory clock in Hive OS for NVIDIA GPUs. Okay, so in this case, you know, you might have been using 550 in Afterburner. Here, you're going to be using 1100, and that would make sense. And if you click on the little eye, or if you put your mouse over the eye, you can see that basically it says the same thing that I just said. And then for the fan, we're going to go with zero, let it do auto. And then for the power limit, we're going to stick with 110. I always go a little bit lower on power than recommended for some reason. <laughs> and in this case, we're not gonna turn on, uh, oh God, an F large mat pill. The pill, we're not gonna turn that on um, because we were, well, actually, I guess you could, because it's farm-wide template, I guess you could turn that on. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, so just in case you do fire up a, uh, we do have a 1080, so in, in case you fire up an F hash algorithm, like last night, but we weren't using an NVIDIA rig last night, then it will go ahead and launch the pill also. Although for the case of troubleshooting, maybe you would want to leave it off so that you do get that basic overclock settings. Um, so I'm, I'm on the fence about it. I think I'll leave it off for my farm template. And then you got some other things here where you could specify for uh, the pill, some if you had older uh, GPUs. And then um, you can also delay it before running the pill. I guess that some GPUs didn't like to launch that uh, pill right away and it needed to wait a little while before launching it. Okay, so that is basically it for that. And then we're going to click save. And then you can see it put it in, put the values in here. So now if you were to connect an NVIDIA rig to your farm that did not have its own like a brand new rig and it didn't have its own uh, algorithm settings or anything like that then it would pull these settings so 
you know you would have to you would have to work pretty hard to really mess up a rig but in this case you're a little bit more protected than you were before right with with it getting really crappy overclock settings or no overclock settings and a default uh, flight sheet right and it starts mining something crazy and and overheats your GPUs and blows your breaker and all that stuff all right so <laughs> that is that is basically it for the exercise here and I've done really well I haven't looked at the chat at all so you guys are probably over here yelling at me but that's okay okay y'all did y'all did pretty well y'all were talking a little bit but you weren't really I don't think you were yelling at me so that's good and we are red pretty red today a little bit of a dump it's kind of expected we were on a pretty good little run and then a little red And let's see here. Um, Chancoin, my, my 1080, whenever you put it on 110, it it will work on 110, no doubt. It'll be stable and all that. But I did notice that it would actually push that to the limit and jump over it sometimes. Like if you monitor it, it might be at 112, 114, stuff like that. So I normally, I normally put a one, that's true. I normally put my 1080 at 120, I believe. Let's go see what I what overclock settings I actually have in here right now, because they they seem to be pretty good. Yeah, so I've got. I've actually got them at one, at 110. Yeah. So I think that that's pretty solid, actually. It seems to be very stable. I mean, at least for a few minutes that's been running. But before I restarted it, you can see I, I had a little bit of time here. So it was actually mining for a, a little while before before the, the stream. So um, yeah, and see they're, they're actually down there in 108, 106. I mean, not bad. This room's a little hot, so I'm surprised that they're even, the temperature is even that low. Yeah, not bad. What's up, Mining Pirate? Mining Chamber, what's up, man? Red Panda, what's up? All right, so I got a couple minutes left. So I want to show you guys something. You know, we've been working on this uh, the next... Um, shoot, I guess I closed it. We've been working on the next charity giveaway thing that we're working on for the community. It's going to be for the community, but are with the community for charity, right? It's a poker tournament on poker stars and everybody's invited. This is not something that just the YouTubers are doing like we did with the with the mining rig frame build, the beta frame build. We're actually wanting all of our viewers, if you're into if you play poker at all, even if you don't, it's still fun, you know, it's free. It, we're, we're expecting a like a ten dollar USD donation in crypto to some addresses that will be uh, distributed to your charity if you were to rent to win a part of the prize pool, right? So all these details are they're going to be coming out. Watch my Twitter. Watch um, maybe I'll do a quick stream on it to show you how to uh, sign up and all that stuff. Uh, maybe Red Panda can do it also and some other uh, YouTubers. I, I really think that we could get a lot of people in it. Uh, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. So uh, we need to we need to uh, promote it a little bit. The, the details of it are nailed down pretty well, I think, right now, as far as like the structure and how it's going to work. Uh, but it is going to be on Poker Stars and um, yeah, Chan coin. I can give you some more coins. I can. Uh, there's a way of giving coins from one player to another. I haven't figured that out yet. I don't know if you do it through Discord only. I, I don't remember, but or I don't know how. I know that Shuby helped somebody the other night uh, by giving them some coins. So it might have been you actually. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember if it was you, Chan coin. But anyway, so uh, what I was gonna do was show you. Let's see here. So we've got some addresses, okay, that are designed for the donations. So this is the, let me get to where I'm at. 
I gotta pull up. Let me pull up the details here real quick. So these are, this is basically gonna be the, uh, some of the details on, on how it's laid out, the name of it, how to join and all that stuff, okay? But you've got these donation addresses that you have to send your $10 charity donation. It's not going to the winner, it's going to the winner's charity, okay? I need to make that very clear. This is not like someone trying to, not, we're not trying to make money or anything. No one's gonna make money. This is just for fun. Uh, the only people that's gonna make money is the charity themselves, okay? So whatever you choose, that's one of the that's one of the things that you have to do right here. Uh, it says you know winners will get the appropriate percent of percent of donations given to their charity. Please choose a charity that accepts crypto to make it easier. You don't have to, but it would just make it, make it so much easier. You could Google you know char uh, charities that accept crypto or Bitcoin or Ethereum or something. Probably Bitcoin would be the best one. But here's all the details. I can provide this in a link probably. Um, it, I, I really think it's gonna be super cool and fun to be able to play some free poker against the community, right? Uh, viewers and subscribers and followers and all that stuff. I think it'll be super neat. So I wanted to show you how you would send your donation address or your donation, your $10 donation. So I am in Zellcore wallet, one of the one of my favorite wallets. So you can see I'm in Bitcoin right here. I'm going to send Bitcoin to that address. You saw me copy it, right? Maybe, maybe you didn't. So I'm gonna come back over here, double click to highlight, right click, copy. I'm gonna memorize it a little bit so that I can come over here and go send. Destination address. Okay, so the amount, I'm going to not do that. <laughs> let's go, let's go 0 0.01 or 0 0.0015 maybe, nope, 1.2 maybe. You need, to, you need to get it around $10. Okay, so there's that's good. 1020, I uh, probably couldn't get any closer than that. Okay, so 1020 is what I'm sending. I got a little fee here. Wait, that's not right. Is that right? No, economy fee. There we go. Okay, so it's a dollar fee. Good grief, that was it was gonna be four dollar fee. Okay, so economy fee. I'm just gonna go economy. It doesn't I need to get there like right away or anything. And then the important part is you you want to attach a note to the payment, and this will help prove that you actually sent the the amount to the address and then what's important right here is your poker stars username okay so whatever you sign up to poker stars as your username then that's what needs to go right here and i think that's all you really need for that part right there let me let me look over here real quick let me look at the instructions again make sure me and uh Crypto Mikhail, we're working on this. Uh, so you got poker name, got that. You can send BTC or ETH, and then you want the transaction ID and what charity. So what you could do in here, you could say, okay, uh, charity um, water project, right? That'll probably be mine. And it's not gonna let me type any more than that. Okay, so just your username will be fine in there. Okay, but you do need to decide what your charity is before you know the tournament starts and stuff right or the tournament ends you need to know something before the tournament ends all right so that's my poker stars username going to click send and then here's a transaction id so we're going to copy that you can also show it in explorer uh, let's do that so i can copy this and then what i would do is i would send that send that transaction id uh, or the link up here to the transaction on the Explorer to either me or Crypto Mikel through social media, right? So you would either hit us up on Twitter or Discord. These are our usernames here. And just send that to us, right? So I'm gonna send that to, I'm gonna send my transaction 
ID to Crypto Mikkel right now. Maybe. All right, there. So I just sent my transaction ID to Crypto Mikkel. So now he's got it. So now that is kind of proof of my entry fee. So I hope I hope that makes sense, right? So it's we we just we just have a have to have a way. We can't just have people that want to play just throwing money into the donation address, right? We need to make it to where we know where the donation came from. So just do it that way. You know, if you want to, if if you absolutely have to do it like privately, we can work something out with a privacy coin or something. Maybe send CCX or Rio or something. You know, to me, and then I can I'll transfer it or uh, uh, convert it to BTC or whatever and, and get it out that way. So if you need that, just hit us up on social media. Let us know uh, what you need and let's have some fun, man. I think it's going to be super cool. It is a turbo tournament. So the, the rounds are only five minutes. Uh, you start with 10,000 in chips. Start with 10,000 in free chips, play chips and let's go through it here so the, it's going to be on the 11th saturday the 11th at 1 p.m eastern time the game is no limit texas hold them currency play money the buy-in it's going okay so this is important too so the buy-in is going to be 20k right but you so you need to have that in your poker stars account before the tournament starts you need to have at least 20k and the way it works is um, you can, I think whenever you first sign up, you get 50,000. And then, uh, you know, if you don't play, then you'll, you'll have plenty, right? You'll have 50,000. But if you play and lose or whatever, you can click the little, um, there's a button up there that says get free chips or something like that. Get free play chips. And you would click that and you would get 15,000 and you can do that every four hours. So, uh, you know, that can help add to your stack right so that you don't get below the limit but you want to this is a rebuy tournament so you're going to want to have the initial buy-in which is 20 and then you'll want to have two 17,000 rebuys so that's 34 plus 20 so 54 so if you have 54,000 at the beginning of whenever the the tournament starts if you have 54,000 then you're good you'll be able to do your initial buy-in and then two rebuys if you bust out in that first 30 minutes so if you bust out of the tournament in the first 30 minutes you can rebuy for 17 so I hope this that this makes sense I mean you know you can see it right here on screen I've got everything in the instructions so uh, should work out pretty well I think it's gonna be really cool there'll be a break every 55 minutes the registration doesn't open until 27 June at 1, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And there you go. All right, so let me check the chat real quick. I know that probably the note is for personal use. Oh, it doesn't go. It doesn't go with. So it's not a part of the transaction from Zelcor. Uh, that sucks. I thought it would be a part of the transaction. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, nonetheless, you can still send the transaction ID, tra send that information into, uh, you know, to one of us on social media so that we can figure it out. Yeah, right on. Okay, so yeah, I thought that that was a note. Yeah, that I mean, that makes sense. It's like a note for personal use. I, I get it. I get it. Okay. Well, that sucks. All right. Well, anyway, so that won't work. That part won't work. But you guys know that if you just send the transaction ID, you should be good. And your PokerStars username. So hopefully all that made sense. All right, let's go ahead and see. I think uh, Brandon Coin. let's see if he was going live. Probably not live, probably a premiere, maybe. Nope, nothing. Oh man, bummer. Okay, well, I don't feel bad that I went 10 minutes over then. Is anything else going on? Anybody got a stream going on tonight? 
DCA, I think y'all had something earlier today, right? So this is what it looks like. Poker Stars, when you first sign in, it's it is free. You could you just go all the way route all the way through the free money stuff. Don't you don't have to deposit any money. But yeah, you can click uh, free chips up here. See it's it's ready for me to click it. It's not doesn't have a timer here. So I'm gonna click free chips. It's gonna add fifteen thousand and then you can see the clock timer up here for four hours. So after four hours, you know. Uh, I can click that again. Now the thing is, is that again, if you don't have enough, we can probably work work it out, and I can send you some, or some, one of the other players can send you some. Uh, and if worse comes to worse, you can always buy play chips, which I think is kind of silly. But uh, if you do need to buy play chips, um, there is that capability as well. And I don't think it's that expensive, actually. I think I've looked at this before. It wasn't that bad, and you got like a lot of chips for pretty low. Cost, but I don't know why it's not opening now. It's kind of odd. It's nice to see I'm not really dropping frames tonight. It doesn't look like either. So it must have just been my internet last night. So once you're in here though, you'll click on home games. And then I think you have to join a poker club right here. And then you would type in club ID is 364-2649 right imitation code is crypto mining so it'll look like this whoops i don't know if the capitalization matters i don't know if it's case sensitive or not uh, but that's the way you would do it three six four two six four nine and then your name and what i would recommend on the name i i, I talk about this on the instructions is is at least put something in here where we kind of know who you are, right? Um, not for like doxing purposes, but we want to play against our subscribers, our viewers, our followers, you know, and all that stuff and uh, other YouTubers, right? So uh, if you just put some random name in here, we're not going to know who you are and it's not going to be as fun, I think, if we kind of had an idea of who you are, right? So uh, put that in there like that and then click uh, I agree and then join club, right? And then once that happens, I will get a notification in here that I need to approve you. So you'll have to wait on me to allow you in, and then we'll go from there, man. This is this is going to be cool stuff. Yeah, we we uh, we decided on the 11th. What part of uh, Florida are you going to be in, Shuby? And if you were here for like the overclocking templates part of this stream we're way past that <laughs> so yeah sorry i should, probably should have just started a new stream or something you guys know me i just i just like to talk so actually i don't like to talk i'm pretty much an introvert but this is the only time i get to talk crypto and poker is also kind of it's interesting me again i was in the poker scene a lot you know 10 years ago or something but uh, now I'm kind of, I don't know, kind of getting back into it, I guess. Maybe a little bit. It's interesting. Oh, you're going to be in Lakeland? Um, hmm. Can you work out, like, a remote access, maybe? Take a, do you have a laptop or something with you? I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure there's a way. Unless you have to work, of course. So I don't know, is anybody playing poker tonight? Uh, that's something else that we've been doing, guys, is we've been playing, guys and gals, we've been playing uh, just like uh, regular cash, right? It's not real money, right? It's just fake money. So you can come in and fake money, it's play money. So you can come in here and play also if you wanted to. And this, this would be presented to you after you join that club. So after you join the club, you should be good. And you'll be able to get in on this table here. I'm sitting here waiting, so come get some. <laughs> yeah, Nefarious is crazy.
All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to wait over here on this poker table and see if anybody wants to play. I will see you guys tomorrow night. Tomorrow is Thursday. I don't have a plan for content, but if you thought that this was entertaining or somewhat useful... Oh, you know what? I forgot something. Totally got off track here. The fans. Ace24 wanted me to look at the fans. So I think what he was talking about was in Hive... I had set for my AMD rig, which is no longer in here, so I'm not even going to be able to show it. I had set the fans to, I had taken off the auto fan. But see, in this case, I had, I turned it on and then I have no AMD, right? So this is basically saying, okay, do not control AMD cards. So I want, what this is saying is you want the miner to control AMD cards. And this is something that Chancoin pointed out really well last night, is like Phoenix Miner, Claymore Miner, those actually have fan control built into the miner, the way I understand it. So you act, so they actually control your fans. So you would, if you, know, you, if you wanted the miner to control your fans, if it is a miner, if you're using a miner that can control your fans, then you're gonna wanna set your auto fan, maybe if you want it on, on for NVIDIA, then just click this little slider here for no AMD. So that basically says, do not control AMD cards, only NVIDIA, right? So then you just click apply and then you're good to go. So that was kind of what um, Ace24 was asking about, I believe. But in his case, if he's just got, um, if he's just got AMD, then you could just turn this off altogether, depending on what miner you're using. So your miner has to be able to control your fans. So ho hopefully that makes sense. Let me know, Ace24, let me know. <laughs> Uh-oh, somebody's in there. All right, guys. Is it Shuby? Hey, what's up, Shuby? All right, I will see you guys later. I'm going to play some poker with, with uh, Whoa, that was loud. With Shuby, I'm going to fold. See you later. See you tomorrow night. I don't have any content, content scheduled, but we'll see what happens. Stay savage, everybody. Okay.